All right. It's been, it's been a rough couple of days. Uh, that's referring to the weather. And it's uh, been really tough on city crews, but they've just done a spectacular job in keeping the, the city open, as we've known for centuries around here. Those snowstorms come with the 6 and the 9 and the 12-inch storms, and then the idea is to get as much of that snow out of the way because it's oftentimes followed by a polar blast that drops the temperatures below zero and turns that stuff into, into concrete. Um, some folks have recognized in shoveling out their driveways how difficult it is. Well, it's just as challenging with the heavy equipment that, that we use uh, to keep the streets open. But the streets, the sidewalks, the bike paths uh, and lanes are, are open despite the, the record cold. We are really grateful to all the folks who are out there and the support staff. I mean, obviously streets out in front there along with parks, but you know they've got the, the backup there of fleet services to keep that equipment going. Building inspection played a vital role, and let me just say that with only one exception, our cautions were heeded in regards to don't use a flame source or something excessive like that to thaw out your pipes. We had only one small fire in that regards. Um, police and fire were, were available to assist people in, in situations of an emergency, and of course they were able to get through the city because of the work that, that streets had done. Uh, Metro provided the, those warming vehicles, which were essential not just to the Metro riders, but uh, for the firefighters. And, and let me just point out that in these kinds of temperatures, uh, you go out there and fight a fire, uh, it's basically no more than 15 minutes at a time. And so we've got to rotate those crews in and out and, and get them warmed up before they go again. Um, water utility does something that none of us would dream of doing, and that's to work with flowing water in 20 degree below weather. And they will continue uh, dealing with changes in the system as we see the impact of temperatures changing, stress created on the pipes, and uh, we're not out of this winter yet. We've got a lot of stories and anecdotes of, of great heroic services, and uh, it's just a tribute to the people of this city and, and to, to their, their being safe uh, during the, the last week. So now we go from the freezer into the swimming pool. Uh, what we're expecting is something we rarely see, but because of the, um, you know, fire department always has to make sure everybody knows they're there. Uh, so as I said, we, we are going from the freezer into the swimming pool now, and we're going to experience something that is almost as rare as the sub-zero temperatures, and that is the possibility of flooding in our city streets as the 20,000 drains leading into our storm sewers are confronted with the snow and packed ice and the melting and possibly rain that we may see in the next two and a half days. Uh, Saturday, temperatures are expected to warm up to 37, and the pavement temperature is going to be incredibly cold. So on contact, we've also got the additional problem of, uh, of uh, slippery sidewalk, so be careful out there. Our crews will be out there working in the most difficult situations and if people find that their uh, streets are starting to flood between the melting and the rain they should call streets east or streets west and we will of course do our best to get a crew there as soon as possible people should check their own properties especially their downspouts and make sure 
that the water flow is away from their properties. That's really critical. Uh, there may be ice backed up in the gutters. If you're like me, it's always a lot of fun to go up to the, go, go to your downspout and start pounding on it and listening to that ice as, as, it, as it flows down and, and, and out the bottom. Uh, if your home is basement is prone to flooding, you have a sump pump, you know what to do, but the important thing is to take a look at it and, and keep an eye on, on what's going on. Uh, so with that, see, you want to explain what our, what our crews are going to be doing and how you guys are going to respond? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what we'll be doing in the Streets Division as of tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. is we are going to go out and we are going to continue on our salt routes, our main arterials, and we're going to clean those up. If you look around the isthmus, we have a lot of shaded areas where we haven't been able to salt this last storm at all. We've had a sand-salt mixture, and that's the only thing we've been able to apply. So from that point, we're going to go out at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Temperatures are supposed to be about 27 degrees, we'll warm up through the day, and we're going to clean those up. We're also going to work on anything we have, like crossovers, that's the middles of a main thoroughfare, and turn lanes. So we're going to get those cleaned up tomorrow. So the Monday morning commute should be much better than it has been in the past couple weeks. So that's our number one priority. Number two, I just want to speak a little bit for engineering. They've been out all week clearing inlets. Those are the folks that always are out clearing inlets, and they do a great job. So those will be the folks you should contact. I'm sorry. That's all right. Engineering. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that. Contact engineering because they do have a 24-hour number that you can call in case we have a problem. Uh, the slow melt on the residential streets that are hard packed, we have to just watch that over the course of the weekend. And you never know, maybe Monday morning, it's always possible that we might have to plow out the middles of the streets because we're going to have a lot of slush as that hard pack starts to melt. So I just want people to be aware of that. And from that standpoint, I think overall the city streets are in great winter driving condition considering what we've went through. And, and I've noticed how well the Madisonians have driven on these roads because it's been a tough commute. And so my hat's off to everybody there. So that's where we are from the streets division standpoint. Questions? Yes. Uh, I know this is more county's area, but is there concern with lake levels moving forward? No. No, we're, we're not concerned at all about that. That's not going to be an issue and hopefully will not be an issue uh, in the spring. That's that's when it would come up. Why, why is it not a concern? I'm just going to look at this the, vol the volume of water just isn't there. Okay. I guess what's the greatest concern looking into the weekend? Is it, you know, uh, packed inlets and flooding in the streets? Is it potential ice? Um, well, from... Historically, from my work history here, we're going to have a warm-up, but we have a lot of snow out there. It's going to take a little bit of time for this to warm up and melt. So it's not going to be an all-at-once big rush to the inlet. So we have to warm it up a little bit before it can actually get there. One thing I think is good is we've had a lot of light snow that we haven't had a lot of freezing, so that water can probably get to an inlet, get underneath that snow bank. That's what I'm really hoping for will happen here. Or like, or normally what would happen is it would melt and thaw and now you have an ice dam that prevents it so a nice warm weekend we could actually maybe not have as many problems just because of that just because that warm air warm water could actually get under it but if it had been frozen for several weeks we might have a different story that's just what i'm hoping for the, the running water that's going to come down uh on, along the gutters of the streets is most likely and hopefully going to be under right. the snow and the ice pack along the curb into the inlet and in most instances you won't see it as as it flows. Uh, where we'll be concerned is if you do see it on the surface of, of the ice and snow. If overall what can residents, every residents do to prevent Well I can recall I can recall a number of years ago we had the similar situation and if you've got one of those uh, ice picks, not picks, but uh, they, you know they kind of look like a hoe, and you can use it to scrape, those can work very efficiently as you chop up the ice and create an opening in, in the inlet. Just don't let it slip out of your hands and go down into the sewer. Are there particular areas of the city that are of concern for this? Not really. I mean, it's it's any any place 
where we've, we've got drainage, and I guess that's the important thing compared to last August. Um, but there it was mostly low-lying areas, but you may be a third of the way down the hill, and if there's an obstruction and a dam at that point, uh, you can be affected. And one thing about it, we're going to get warming temperatures tomorrow morning, and it's going to be warm until Monday afternoon. So we're not going to get that freezing at night to prevent that water from flowing. It's going to slow up, but at least it's still going to keep running. So that'll help prevent ice dams at the inlets. We still see sand magnets in some places and some homes. Is that, you know, another recommendation in this or no? If, uh, if a home still has sandbags left over from last uh, summer and fall, just make sure that the drainage off of the building gets around the sandbags and you don't end up uh, having the sandbags hold the water up against your home. That's, that's critical. What will be done when, if a street does flood? What will the city do? Well, engineer, go ahead. Yeah, engineering will be out there and they'll break up uh, the snow and ice. They've got the equipment to do it. Mm -hmm. So just to free up the inlet then? Right? Yeah. yeah. The storm sewers are still working. Mm -hmm. And despite the freezing temperatures, uh, they're, they're flowing. I know you touched on how hard everyone's working, but I mean, this is like, it's really cold and there's snow and now there's this. I mean, how are your crews handling all of this? This is like constant work. It's a constant drive, and all the agencies have just stepped up like they always do. I mean, the city employees are second to none. It's just what they signed up to do. They signed up to do this, and they step up in emergencies, just like the flood, and it goes on and on. Historically, we've always got it done. Can I go so far as to say that some actually enjoy the yes. challenge of, yes. of this kind of weather? I mean, they, they say, they're saying, you know, this is why I wanted to work in this, and this is why I wanted to be prepared and to serve the city. Are there, I mean, I know you talk about tips and stuff, but and the, the extreme cold, there was this fear that people could be seriously hurt. Um, is there that, still, that same danger in regards to what's going to happen this weekend? Well, we, we, we don't, I mean, it's 50 degrees, it's going to be 50 degrees, 60 degrees warmer than it was Wednesday and Thursday. So in terms of that extreme danger, and I mean, we know, uh, there's that tragedy involving the student at the University of Iowa. Uh, we saw what happened with that Federal Express uh, uh, driver. Uh, it's not that extreme, but the, the point is there's still, there's still danger. There's danger as a result of slipping and falling, and there's, there's, there's still danger. I mean, this is Madison, Wisconsin. I don't know how many people, as I was out earlier today, I saw in shorts. Um, okay, fine. But I, I, I make the same point I did at the beginning of this week. If you're going out, especially at, in the evening, try and go in pairs. Do not go alone. Is there any concern with the ground? Because I know with how cold it got, you heard some people heard those bangs. Um, is there any concern with this quick thawing of the ground? It can disrupt some of the water pipes. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, you got two things affecting our water pipes. One is the permafrost and how deep it goes. That can crack a pipe, cause a leak. But the second is big fluctuations in temperature mm -hmm. can ch cause shifts and, and movement. And, and so that's why the water utility is going to be as vigilant in the next couple of days as it's been all last week. Uh, the other issue we may have is potholes. And potholes are a result of a crack, a seam in the pavement, and then the combination of water and changes in temperature. And so uh, we, we may see some potholes develop early next week, hopefully not. Is anyone looking into kind of the the crazy weather from the summer into the winter, the flooding, now the cold, into maybe the impact it's having on, on the businesses here? I know Hilldale was closed because of a water main break. Businesses are closed for the cold or flooding. There's just the weather, what impact it has. 
Well, there's no no question that it, it has had a, a greater impact in the last six months than than in most years, especially the combination of August flooding and and now uh, these these very cold temperatures. The one thing I'm pleased about is that we've done our job. The city staff has kept the city open, kept the city open so that when the businesses return to normal. Uh, their employees, the shoppers, the workers can get there. In addition to that, we've, we've got uh, the emergency vehicles, buses, the fire trucks, the police are able to get through. And that's, that's our principal job, keep the city open. And also, you know, when the schools are ready to open, we don't want a situation that you know, they're ready to go, but we have failed and we didn't fail. So I'm, I'm real pleased for, for the services we provide. <coughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Tomorrow, wear your galoshes, your rubber boots, whatever it is you wear when it rains, and uh, two pair of socks. <laughs>